All right, so we're very excited today. We have Jennifer Stearns here in our office. Hi. And uh, we're just giving her a quick tour of the shop, of the production studio. Of Ditto Form. Ditto Form. Where all the magic happens. Yes. All right. So this is where we assemble the Ditto Forms. We get the foam in. Uh, it's carved by a precise machine uh, using your scan. The digital scan that we are, we're going to take in a little bit. Uh, and that is used to cut the foam into your shape. This is sort of the general idea of what's going to happen. Uh, there's the foam gets carved into your shape. There are pieces that get put together. And then Irene is here as well, and she is covering, putting the, the cover that's on the top. So each cover is made for each specific ditto form. Uh, we don't pre-make them. It's a very individual process. The whole process of making a, a ditto form is a one-to-one -one deal. So you could do this with your own dress form or your own ditto form. Uh, if you wanted to recover it, we use a four-way stretch jersey uh, and uh, that makes it easy. You can use one piece on one side for the front and one piece for the back. And um, Irene is right now pinning it directly into the foam. Um, a benefit of the foam is you can pin directly into it. It doesn't compromise the integrity of the ditto form at all. And so that will help her get it straight. Uh, and then she will make uh, essentially make a sock out of it. Two, two seams down each side, one on each side, and then turn it inside out, sew it, put it back on. And it'll fit tight, and with the stretchiness, it allows it to snap right to the body. Uh, and so once the cover is on, then we can put the body marking lines on. All right, so once we have the cover on, then we put body marking lines on the ditto form for you. We're not going to do style lines, we're going to do the body marking lines to get you started. So you have a front center, there's a back center. The bust line and the uh, low hip line we'll put on. That's one that's a, a common marker. We may or may not put the waist on if we know where you want it to be. Uh, waist can be a subjective thing. There's a definite definition. Uh, there's pants waist. There's high waist. There's true waist. There's where you want it to be waist. Um, so sometimes we'll leave that off if it's not a, a distinct marker that we know where you want it to be. But we give you lots of extra of this ribbon. It's just a quarter inch grow grain black ribbon. And so you can put your style lines on where you'd like them to be, to be helpful for you for your things. You can put a, a shirt that you like, a sleeveless shirt where you like the end of it on here and then take that tape and mark it right exactly where you want it so the next time you know where you want it to be, et cetera, et cetera. So and I see you make men's forms too. Yes, so some of the younger tailors that I've come across with really do want to drape. And yeah. so they yeah. want, they right. need their own body. Um, and then the costume market is different than the tailoring market. So you do need your body to be able to do yeah. some of the extensive costumes. If you're going to make, fabricate something out of warbler or foam or whatever, you know, you need to have your body so you know how it's going to fit because you're the one who's going to have to carry it all day and modeling it on yourself off and on, off and on. It's even worse than doing clothes. So yeah. Uh, that's very cool. So um, you can pin into these yes. when you're designing. This is wonderful. Yes. They're and, great. you know, they're they're lightweight, uh, so not having to move around. Do you want to show them what is inside? So you, you have to get a pole for it yourself, right. right? Yes. So you do have to get your own pole, but the cool thing is there's already an insert inside um, for you to use with that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a PVC pipe. So much like um, if you've seen the videos for bootstrap fashion for their things, it's just a, a straight PVC pipe that's in the center. It's got a stop right around here so that you can put it on here. So um, there's the shot underneath, there's the pole, and it's an inch and a quarter pipe. So a regular IV pole works extremely well. It's the right size. That's a great you idea. can adjust it up and down, and then you can put it right on. That's a good idea. I'm going to try to put mine on one of my um, dress form poles because I have three dress forms I won't need. Right. I, when I get mine. Yes, there you those go. Those other ones are going to not be as loved up probably. But So, and I've seen all different kinds of creative things that people have done. Um, you can take a floor lamp where you really like the base of the floor oh, lamp that's real lamp. heavy and just chop the lamp part off at the right height. That's a cool so idea. So you can put it yourself on. 
Uh, for those who want to do pants, uh, there's the benefit of the split leg. Now it's not 100% anatomically correct, of course, but it is enough so that you can do the exterior of your pants, if you will. Is that the right word? I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna be on that. And so Jennifer is gonna help us work through some of that stuff to make sure we get I, that. My thought is at the right, but Jennifer's gonna let us know, so we'll find out. Um, so you can hang it from the top. We use a, a stiff pole out the top. Uh, a sturdy pole out of the top uh, that's a furniture grade PVC so it looks a little nicer it's black matches the trim and then you can hang it uh, we provide this hook that you can hang it in your closet even if you wanted to or um, in a doorway in the doorway yeah so this is a you know a commercial display for a store pole if you um, are narrow enough on your back you can use the top part of the the IV pole the little part that hangs holds the bag if it was being used like I can't do that because my brush one would hang like this because <laughs> of um, a little more extra going on in the back there but um, I use my attention rod in a doorway and it works great so well this is wonderful all right so excited is there anything else we want to show so no I think we're good all right, so Carol, thank you so much yes. for showing us, or showing, well, showing us, yes. your beautiful studio. It's such a great space. Wonderful. Things you didn't see, some of the production, and there's even more equipment downstairs. We're on the second floor, so downstairs there's some big equipment that, that they use to also make the form. So we wanted to give you a, a sneak peek. Yeah. yeah, so it was really great. So our next step will be a go to the other studio and we will take the digital body scan. <gasps> I'm getting scanned next. We'll be right back. Hi. So, <laughs> hi, so this is Carol. I'm here with Jennifer and we are getting ready to start doing her scan and I'm just gonna show her a sample, which is me. Uh, so we'll know what we're, our target is. So this um, is why I tested it one time and this is with me wearing clothing. So this would be why we can't wear clothes because <laughs> your mannequin would have all of that and that's not you. And it's too hard to edit out what you are underneath of there. We can't see underneath of that garment. So yes. and we, I don't need any padding. And so we'll, uh, <laughs> we can, you know, funny little neck, all that kind of stuff. So um, that was just a test to see what's going on. But that's the general idea. It's grayscale, it's very dramatic. It's hard to look at. Uh, so it'll look more like that. I had it on the grid view. Smash like a bug, unsmashed. So uh, we'll be able to turn it around and look at things. Oh, look how um, cool that is. So you can see here my garment was not pulled down, my uh, sweater, <laughs> so things like that. So we'll be able to see all of that um, the parts that are her and the parts that aren't her and her things. So oh, it's exciting. So now we're gonna close that. We are going to open the scanning tool itself. And then I need to adjust the turntable. Nope. It needs to go that way some more. Yeah, oh, per, oh, no, back up, back a little, up, oh, oh, nope. A little bit more, a little bit more, tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, Other way, uh, a little bit right there. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. Yay, we have the goal. All right. So, now, Becker, you just want to come in here for a second. Um, and this is part of the scanning tool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
then I like to just kind of do something strange to like completely relax my body, like how you relax your face so it's not stiff when you're talking. Okay. Uh, so just stand up. So that's most like how you normally stand. If you think too much, then it gets crazy. So just, just stand up. Hands are by your sides. Mm -hmm. You're going to make a little circle, like you're holding a cotton ball or something like that. Um, not a fist, because you don't want to be tense, just a little circle. If you leave your hands open, you'll spin with the motion of the platform. We don't want that to happen, because the platform's going to move you, and your job is just to stand still. Okay. So, hands by the sides, uh, not locked knees. Uh, and then we're going to make a little circle with our hands, and then pull an imaginary string out from our side seats. <coughs> so, yeah, so make your hands in a circle. Here you go. And then, now, you're going to look forward. And then whichever way your chin is right now, you're going to think chin, hands, chin, hands. You're not going to think about any other part of your body. So your chin, keeping that where it is, and your hands. And then the motion will rotate. And I'm going to have to stay just like this. Yep. And breathe. If you hold your breath, not only will you fall over, uh, you will uh, uh, make it bigger. Then you want to be at the outside of your breath, and we want to be... Get the average, so if you just breathe as normally as you can in your undergarments on okay. a spinning platform in front of a stranger. Okay. And that will get the best results. Okay. There you go. And if you move your feet just a little bit closer together, not too much. There you go. That's good. Now just bend over, stand up. There you go and put your hands in a circle and then pull that imaginary string out from your side seam straight out. All right, we're gonna go a little bit lower than that. I'm sorry, it's gonna start turning. Hold that. <laughs> this will be the practice practice one. It's going to turn all the way around and go back a quarter past where we started. Am I doing it? You are doing great. It wasn't supposed to start automatically like that, but it is recording and we can see you. We can't see your face, which is, I think, probably nice. Um, all right, beautiful. If you'll go ahead and step off for me, I'm gonna put you in as a code so that it can't find you, the big data world. Can't find you because uh, I'm going to enter a little bit of personal information, and it'll have your image. So we don't want your personal stuff out in the cloud. So, uh, so look at there I am in all my glory. Yep, and you can see that part too on the screen, spinning around. Oh, we'll okay. stop and we'll look at them later. That one, her arm is a little chopped off because this program is designed to do torsos very, very well. We're going to do that one more time. Okay. Um, and I'm going to have to do it with your arms a little bit lower. Okay. So same starting position. We're going to start facing forward with our feet um, in that yoga parallel. And so then you, you're, um, you just bring it, yeah, there you go. You did it. <laughs> and then hands in a circle by your sides, pull out your side seams. And then just a little bit closer to your sides, lower, lower, right there. Perfect. I'm gonna hit start, and I'm gonna count down. Three, two, one, a little jerk, and it will start moving. And you are breathing. You are thinking about your hands. You are thinking about your chin. You're gonna hold it where you are. And then, just breathe, just breathe. You are halfway around, it's gonna go all the way around and back to the center and a quarter turn past. You're doing great. Breathe, hands, chest. All right, there you go. I will go ahead and step off. You can me. see if I was breathing. <laughs> it doesn't go in and out. I could tell that you weren't going to faint. Uh, <laughs> that's, the, to move. that's the important thing. And you want to hold still, but you know, if you if you think about holding still, then your muscles engage, and then we don't really want that. 
All right, we're, we're looking at me in all my glory. There I am. All right, so what we're looking at now is we have three different scans. One, her arms are a little higher up. Let me show you that one first. So this was that first one. Um, it started a little abruptly, and so she wasn't quite ready, which is fine, because what I need this one for is a visual underneath of here. I'm going to use this picture when I'm hand carving uh, a section on her body. The machine does most of the work, but this part underneath of here is where I need to figure out what part is part of her arm and what's part of her body so I can separate that accordingly. And I we took a bunch of hand measurements that I've got written down. Um, uh, by hand measurement, she means she took my <laughs> waist, hip, such and such. I thought she wanted to measure my hand. <laughs> um, not, not hand. Yeah, yeah so we, we got that straight. All right. <laughs> and so we took a couple underneath of here in a way that we will be able to uh, to normalize that out. Now you can see on this, well, it's big here, that there are parts that of her that are not her body, that's her clothing. And so in between this, we will um, smooth that out. So that white line was the top of my pants? Yes, so this is the top of your uh, the, your leggings. Yep. And so then on your bra here too, there's there's parts that the computer doesn't exactly know what it is, so it, it uh, leaves parts in and out. So that's we use for that. That little bump, that's the top of my um, underwire. Yep, and then, then, circle. and then right here, there was a little bit of gap between your the cloth and your skin. So the computer just kind of tried to guess what was going on. We know that, so we know how to deal with that. Um, and so I'm just see. I don't know. You might not be able to see on the um, video here, but those numbers go up quite significantly when you move the tape up and down. So, so you're, you're checking against the manual measurements for the, what the scan says. Right. Um, so partly so that we can make sure the machine's calibrated right, and partly um, so that we know where things are. All right, so Jennifer and I are sitting here looking at the screen at the two different scans uh, that are the ones we're going to choose between. And I'm going to make them bigger so we can see that. Oops, I did the wrong button. Bigger. I think I look skinnier on the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it look like And that? so actually, um, they have to do with how you're standing. There are two different ones. They look very similar in many ways. Um, because you stand the way you stand, so that's the point, right? Yeah. But we're going to choose between these two pictures and see which one will be the best to make the diddle form from. Okay. Which image is the best? For accuracy. For accuracy, for how you stand, if there's something strange about one of them or another. Uh, and so, uh, in doing this, we can click on these lines. The lines on this program are put here uh, according to an algorithm that was designed by a fitness center person trying to interpret clothing lines. So they're often not where we want them. So we move them to where we want them. So these two chest measurements, you can see, um, Jennifer, that they're, they say they're 49.2 and 49.4. That's clearly a lot bigger than what we got. We got 46. Uh, when we pulled did, it to, did you hear to that the tight measurement. Did you hear that we got 46? 46. <laughs> now what's happening, um, that doesn't surprise me at all on the chest area, what's happening is partly um, the color and the padding on your bra, the, the computer can tell that that's there, and it, it, but it gets confused, so it adds more. And then yeah. also it's adding a little bit to this, because um, it's catching a little bit of your underarm as part, it's counting it as part of your chest instead. So that's not a measurement that we are going, we're going to mark it down, but we're going to ignore it. Uh, when we do the carving, it will be 46 when she is done. Um, so um, but we're still looking at this for which one is best. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to compare uh, the croquis. We're going to put them on top of each other. That's really interesting. So like you stand silhouettes. exactly the same. Are they stacked on each other? They're stacked on top of each other. There's a slight difference. Yeah. The green one, you're standing a little more that way. Mm -hmm. Whether that's straighter or forward, we don't know. Same here, very the same. So that's nice. So that tells us um, that uh, you have a very consistent stance, which means that your diddle form will uh, be the average of how you stand. 
Um, Because everyone moves, you know, Mm -hmm. so we're capturing you at a moment in time. Mm -hmm. uh, And, uh, but this will give us that. So now we'll just look back at the 3D version and see. My crotch looked like it was hanging low, but it's because my my inner thighs, my inner thighs were touching. Yeah, so inner thighs touch and the computer doesn't know what to do. So it makes it up. So it looks like we call that occluded. Um, We know that your legs aren't touching together. So we will edit that out um, and that won't be the case. We took, again, we took the hand, uh, used by hand measurements. <laughs> uh, we, we took the hand measurements to have that number so we can make that accurate mm-hmm. in the final All setting. Right. So these look very, very similar. So similar. I'm gonna let Cheryl pick. <laughs> I'm deferring to the expert. I'm gonna go the one on the left. Slightly straighter, and the bra line will be easier to edit. They're they're essentially the same. So, all right. So, timestamp. We're going to choose 701. So, along with um, the images, you will get a, a. a PDF report that will have measurements and they're listed here along the side. Mm -hmm. Now some of them you need to take with a grain of salt. So this across the shoulder measurement is doing from shoulder point to shoulder point. But it's doing it as defined for fitness centers by a man. So um, sorry for the stereotype but it's someone who doesn't, doesn't know clothing construction. So they're measuring from way over here to way over there. So that uh, across the shoulder measurement, we're yeah, gonna take that with a grain of salt. Yep. Definitely the limbs because it, the the um, program is done for torso. Suspect, but everything in the middle here is going to be um, on to um, what we are close to need. So um, the under bust, I'm gonna move a little bit down because that's moving the under bust measurement down a little bit. I mean, we're moving where we're going to measure down a little bit on my body, is that what we're doing? What we're trying to do is not match the the measurements. We're checking to make sure they're accurate, but we're also um, just using it as a point, a, an additional measurement point. So the underbust measurement is uh, 37.6 on the computer scan, uh, but it is a straight horizontal. It can do that because it's, you know, a computer. Right. I took it along this, uh, the bra line here. It was along the bra line in the back. So mine's a little bit bigger. The truth of the matter is we'll be able to get both of these because if I can do that because I can pin it on the form. <laughs> so um, so that is a good measurement there. Uh, upper waist on the scan is 39.2 and I took 39. So, Ooh, so there we're good. <laughs> so now uh, we're getting into an area that will reassure us that the machine is definitely calibrated correctly. Uh, so this one it calls lower waist. We're going to move that to your belly button line. This one. So I got 41 and 3 quarters. It says 41. And, uh, oh, another close uh, one. Half. So that's great. And then now we will turn. Now with you and with a lot of us, this area is really curvy so if you get just a little up on one side or a little down yeah, on the other you can have uh, a difference so i'm going to try to get this as close as possible to where i took it i'm going to take it a little higher um that one's 44.7 um i got 44 and a quarter and that just has to do with you know exactly where that was so yeah, it's within a tolerance so we're happy about that this one it's almost like a front belly and a back belly <laughs> <laughs> They're the same. <laughs> Almost. So, I know that what's the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're back. Oh. oh, see, I can get you in there better like that. How about like that? Mm-hmm. Oh, let me change the battery. All right, so the last thing we're going to do. Yes, we're going to, the last thing that we need to view here on the screen is this high hip measurement. We've checked all the rest of them uh, to our... Um, measurements that we took by hand and they're calibrated accordingly and we've noted the appropriate places. So this high hip measurement is one that's different. It's 45.9, almost 46 inches. 
And then the one that I took uh, was 44 and three quarters. So a little over an inch difference or just about an inch difference. And that would normally be a flag. But I know from looking at this why that happened um, because I've looked at 400 of them. I know that it was the leggings that you were wearing had two seam lines in there at the waistband. Mm -hmm. And the camera uh, was fooled by that. It thought that that meant that that section was um, bigger. The fortunate thing is that behind the scenes image is the correct one. And also we have the hand measurement. So we have noted that the, the one that I took is the correct measurement to be the control measurement on the other end once it's carved. So the machine will do the hard carving. These measurements will have for hand smoothing and to get it to the right place. And um, then it will be a beautiful representation of you. I'm excited. I This is very interesting. So, and you know, and you know, if you're honest with yourself, like I'm looking at that image and I mean, that's me. Yes. You know, and I, and I think I imagined something worse was going to pop up there. So I'm actually, I don't know, I feel like that's me and I can't wait to work with it, yeah. you know, to make patterns. Except for the local. <laughs> yes, we will, we, will, we will take care of the occlusions. Other than that. But I mean, you know, I, that's very interesting.